I hope you all are doing wonderful out there. I bovan duwe pute. Let's get into grade ten, science once again, and this is chemical basis of life. One more beautiful time, and as per the Sri Lankan government school syllabus, what we're going to learn today: significance of carbohydrates. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe our channel and click the bell button. And if you need more information, you can always leave coming to us. And thank you for subscribing and commenting. That is the thing what we are going to discuss in this chapter number one seventh video. So, what we will learn today: significance of carbohydrate, definitely. And along with that, we are going to do some tests to identify carbohydrates. So, let's get into the business very soon. significance of carbohydrate yes as an energy source the main source to obtain energy for the activities of organisms is the carbohydrate now when you are eating carbohydrate that is the main energy source that is what main energy source so always remember the main energy source is carbohydrate that is right that person is doing exercises simply because he is taking carbohydrate then the mon monosaccharides who you call it as glucose produced due to the hydrolysis of those compounds release energy when that person is taking food we already know that and we discuss about it the glucose that is carbohydrate will break into glucose and then when it is mixing with oxygen that we breathe inside the energy is getting released we understood that one in our previous sessions also okay so we came to know the monosaccharide or glucose produced due to hydrolysis of those compounds release energy as a storage compound also this carbohydrate works how does it work exactly look at this these people they are running marathon and marathon is run for a long time and they have to keep a proper energy in their body to continually run like that now what is the storage form of carbohydrates about half of the energy used by muscles and other body tissue is provided from glucose and glycogen you know that glucose and the glycogen where you found and we learned about it in our previous session a storage form of carbohydrate is that the body converts carbohydrate mostly into glucose for immediate energy and into glycogen or fat as stored energy this you remember for your future class also and this is an advanced knowledge so if you want to run marathon you want to have enough glycogen or fat stored energy to run like this for a long time so the carbohydrate work as a storage compound as a structural component in plant cell wall we learned about it carbohydrate significance the next one is as a structural component in the plant cell wall it is definitely becoming carbohydrates due to the photosynthesis and when we when the fruits are ripening the sucrose is getting generated just like that we also learned about it in our previous session as a constituent of nucleic acid okay fine watch which carbohydrate is found in dna no nucleic acid carbohydrates ribose ribose and its related compounds deoxyribose are the building blocks of the backbone chain in nucleic acids better known as dna rna so ribose is used in rna and deoxy ribose is used in dna so in nucleic acid is also the found or we found the carbohydrates that is super interesting and let's do some tests to identify carbohydrates very quickly we will learn about a starch test and test for glucose and the next one is for test for sucrose are you ready okay starch test small amount of food is obtained and grind well with water so you're going to take some small amount of food and you're going to grind that one with the water and you're taking like that 
and a drop of iodine solution is added to the above solution and you will see a purplish blue color appears when there is a purple purplish blue color appears it's confirmed that starch is available so you can find with the starch is available yourself also at home by mixing a small amount of food with the water and put the drop of iodine solution and what will happen if it's turned into purplish blue color it's make sure that starch is available we found out starch in the food the next one is about test for glucose a solution of glucose is obtained into a test tube a solution of glucose is obtained into a test tube like that inside the test tube the glucose is there now few drops of benedic solution to the above solution is added you're taking the benedic solution and you're adding few drops of benedic solution just like that after that what happened the above solution is immersed in a water bath and heated just like that after that the above solution is immersed in a water bath now that particular test tube is with the benedic solution now you can observe color change as below you see that one that particular solution changed into orange color so the color changes happens like blue green green yellow orange or brick red precipitate now look at this very carefully if it is none the changes if there is no any color that means none and if there is a little green color it says it has a little trace and if the yellow color if it's change and it has a low amount of glucose and if you have orange color as per in our experiment it turned into orange color the moderate amount of glucose will be present but if it is more high in glucose yes a brick red precipitate will come remember these colors and the amount of glucose because they might ask you a question like this they have done a test with the benedict solution and it appeared yellow color is it none trace low or moderate so you have to choose this so remember that you have to answer questions like this in your examination do you remember that we learned about sucrose sucrose found in white and brown sugar sugar can and beet and then after that some fruits finally also we learned that phloem sapin trees also found the sucrose now we are going to do that sucrose test sucrose is made when glucose is joining together with fructose yes and then sucrose will appear with the water so it's definitely a disaccharide now test for sucrose is going to happen in the laboratory a sucrose solution is obtained into a test tube just like what we did before so in the test tube we are now getting a sucrose solution now few drops of benedict solution to the above solution is added you see this one we are adding same benedict solution like in the previous test right now what happens is the test tube is immersed in a water bath and heated just like the before now in our previous glucose test with the benedict solution the color got changed but here the color is not changing because it is not glucose it is sucrose am i right for that what you have to do is another step you have to do let's understand that one also now once again few drops of diluted sulfuric acid or you can call it as h2s4 is added to a freshly prepared sugar solution and what you're going to do you're going to freshly preparing a sugar solution and you are putting h2so4 that is diluted sulfuric acid it has to be now what happens the above solution with h2so4 is immersed in a water bath and they are heating it now the solution is not with the benedict solution it's with h2so4 diluted sulfuric acid can observe color changes as below now you see that one the color is changing into yellow color it is changing into yellow color so you can find out the sucrose is present as per these color changes blue green green yellow 
orange and brick red precipitate. So we understood the test for starch, test for glucose and test for sucrose. What did we learn today and what we know at the end of this session, significance of carbohydrates definitely. And then also we learned about some tests to identify carbohydrates such as test for starch, test for glucose and test for sucrose. Remember these things. Good luck to you all in another beautiful session. I'm going to meet you. Till then, bye-bye. Take care of yourself.